I'm Jenny Crescia. I'm your lay leader today. Our pastor Jenna is still bonding with her new Eleanor and uh, maternity leave, so she still will be off until after the first of the year. And Pastor Rebecca is on vacation this week, so you get me. <laughs> I have a few announcements to make. Um, first of all, our quilters are having a craft bazaar next week, so come and buy some of your Christmas gifts next week. Uh, it'll be here at the church. I don't know what time. Anybody know what time? All day. All day. Between services. Between services? Perfect. And just after the last service. Between services and just after the last service. Perfect. Thank you. Um, also, we have Christmas tree sales going on. If you have not gotten your Christmas tree yet, they're for sale over here on the south lot. I think that's so. Um, and, uh, and all the proceeds go to the Boy Scouts and to our youth group. If you have some time on your schedule this Advent season to help sell Christmas trees, they're always looking for people to help support that. And then today, keep in your prayers, Barb and Versi and her family on the passing of her mom this past week. We wish you much uh, peace and joy. Sorry, lost my mic. Peace and joy. We wish you the best. Let me see if I can fix this mic while we're singing the first hymn. Um, so please rise as you are able and start with our opening hymn, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers. <laughs>
God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Is that a good thing to say today? 
you all know that the, <coughs> the official New Year is a month away yet, but today is a happy New Year for the church because today is the first day of the church year. It's a season called Advent. Now, Advent means something is coming. Either something is coming, something important, or someone important is coming. Do you know who's coming that's important? Yes. I didn't agree. Jesus, you're right. We look forward to Jesus coming during Advent. And your family led at the Advent candle. I would like to share an Advent tradition in my family. We had an Advent tree. <clears throat> 61 years ago, I made a, an Advent tree. And every night during Advent, we would light the Advent candle. I would tell the Christmas story to my children. We would sing Away in a Manger or Silent Night or some uh, Christmas song. And then they would get a little treat and put something on the tree. <clears throat> the first one I made had pockets around it. And I used to put a couple M&Ms for my four-year-old and my two-and-a-half-year-old for a treat after we were done. But I had a one-and-a-half-year-old named Mary who didn't understand this, and she would go when no one was looking and snitch the candies. <laughs> so when I made a new tree, I didn't put pockets. I live alone, so there's only one thing on each day to pin onto the tree. But <clears throat> when I had four children, our tree got pretty busy at Christmas time. I would like to have a prayer, and then I would like you to help me, if you will, to put things on the tree. Would you do that? Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. Thank you for coming to us. Help us to love everyone. As you have taught us. Amen. Okay. Can I have since we talk about presents at Christmas? I have a little bitty present for each of you to put on a tree. Now it's a tiny a tiny, tiny pin. So if you have trouble with it, either Mary or I or Logan, if you'll come and help, will help you with the pin, okay? But you can go and put something on the tree. Let's see, make sure there's a pin out. I guess I should have checked these at home. I have other things too, I've starved too. Put a musical instrument. Here's a trumpet. Okay. And a violin. And a harp. Okay. Okay, go ahead and put them on the tree and we'll we'll help you if you need help. The pins are very tiny. You just show us where you want it. Show me where you want it and I'll help you. Okay. It's pretty hard to put the pins in there. Right here, right? Okay. Can you, can you show me where you want yours to be? Right there. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. If 
first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, 33rd chapter. The reading. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now we'll go through our responsive song. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and you have I trusted all the day long. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you should serve in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians, the third chapter. The reading. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now, may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he also strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from the fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. See also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth 
will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Pray with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Thank you to Carol for the children's sermon today. Advent was always my favorite season as a child. It was filled with anticipation and wonder. I loved the outward appearances of the coming of Christmas, the lights, the candles, the shopping, the family gathering together. I have wonderful memories as a child of opening the doors of the Advent calendars each day until we counted down to Christmas Day. The waiting was almost euphoric. In Luke 25, Jesus says there will be signs. Well, these memories are beautiful signs. But as an adult, Advent meant balancing time and money in a busy household. It meant not enough hours in the day to get the stuff done. It meant stress and frustration. It was more reflective of the reading later in Luke today, where he identified fear and foreboding. Advent became a season of looking to the future that was not yet clear or known. As I reflect back, all the signs were there of why my perception of Advent changed from anticipated joys to chores. I can think of times in my life. It might have been the year that Joe lost his job and we had little money for Christmas gifts for our young children. However, we did realize at that time that we were tithing finally. There will be signs, Jesus said. It might have been the first Christmas not spent with my extended family because we lived in Minnesota and they in Chicago and we didn't have the money to travel. There will be signs, Jesus said. It might have been the Christmas that I spent outside a jail cell praying for justice for my son. There will be signs, Jesus said. It might have been the last two years watching my hospital, at, my staff at the hospital, weary and worn, trying to care for patients in a pandemic and being scared for their own lives and the lives of their families and the helplessness that I felt as their leader. There will be signs, Jesus said. It might have been sitting with my friend who had just lost her son to suicide at the age of 18. There will be signs, Jesus said. It might have been when I re-watched the 20th anniversary videos of 9-11 and thought about all the ways that that day changed all of us forever. There will be signs, Jesus said. It might have been one of these, or maybe all of them, or maybe a thousand other things that can happen to us as adults. As I look out at our church family, I know that many of you have gone through a season of change as well. A change into an uncertain future. Maybe even a future you didn't want. Maybe you're there right now. There will be signs, Jesus said. In our gospel reading today, Luke talks about images of distress and confusion and fear. In many ways, the feelings that these words evoke 
mirror the past two years of a pandemic crisis, violent protests, natural disasters, buildings collapsing, and SUVs driving through Christmas parades. Luke wrote this gospel several years after Christ's death, after his resurrection, and after his ascension. At the time, the church was undergoing suffering and injustice. So he wrote the gospel of this chapter to encourage the church, to remind the people that God is in control of events and that he has a plan. In the meantime, he told them to stand firm and witness to his name, watching for signs. Not only the signs that worry us or bring us stress, but the signs that remind us of the miracles in our lives, like the sun rising each morning, the unexpected healing of someone, the joy of a grandchild saying, I love you, or the buds on the trees each spring. The parable in the fig tree in Luke's Gospel reading today is another sign. The fig tree is a common symbol for Israel. The tree in the parable refers to a Christian who has heard the Gospel of Christ and knows about salvation. Earlier in Luke, Jesus tells the parable of the fig tree that, that would bear no fruit. As Christians, we are to bear the fruit of the Spirit as mentioned in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. These fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Jesus uses the fig tree as an example of fruit that comes back to us each spring. He uses our past experiences to help us see the hope in the future. That spring is just around the corner when we see buds begin to appear on the trees. Why? Because we've seen it happen year after year. It's a sign of hope for us after a long winter. Today, the List family lit the first candle of Advent, the candle of hope. The word hope in ordinary English is generally distinguished from certainty. We might say, I don't know what's going to happen, but I hope it happens. Christian hope is when God has promised that something is going to happen, and you put your trust in that promise because you've experienced his work in your life. Hope is a positive and potent spiritual practice with the power to pull us through very difficult times in our lives. The Bible has much to say about hope. But this is what it says about our greatest hope. From Titus 2, 11 to 14, the ultimate Christian hope is that one day Christ will return and we who are looking forward to that return will go to be with him forever. Hope is another sign. In the early 70s, the five-man electrical band released a song called Signs. The refrain went something like this. Sign, sign, everywhere a sign. Blocking up the scenery, breaking my mind. Do this, don't do that, can't you read the sign? Get past my singing, you get the idea. Do we look for signs of the world? Or do we use God's own words as our signs? No matter how much it appears that the world is coming undone, God's way endures. He is not constrained by time. It's in his time. Difficult times do not mean that God has deserted us, but that God will fulfill all of his word to us. God notices us. He cares for us. He comes to us. And he participates in our life's circumstances, the joys and the tears. Luke verse 34 tells us to be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down. Jesus tells us to watch for signs of his return, not to predict the future, but to be prepared when it comes 
in whatever form it arrives in our lives. When we misread signs, it can lead us to try and control our destiny and our future. And that brings fears and anxieties. Jesus tells us to stand up and raise our heads because your redemption is coming near. Redemption is the action of saving or being saved from sin, evil, or error. Christ, our Redeemer, came to earth. He experienced humanness and then died, rose again, and ascended to heaven to meet us again one day. So these signs we see and the things we live through are signs of hope and reassurance, not of gloom and doom. These words in Luke are not a threat. They're a promise of our future with God. Advent is just the time to re-energize and rephrase our thinking. We need to share the good news with others so that they find peace in the midst of their storms, especially now in this hurting world. But you say, Jenny, I am not an evangelist. Oh, I get it. I am the last person to stand on a street corner and talk about the second coming of Christ. But by sharing our stories of pain, grief, and disappointment, others can see that our hope and reassurance comes from God, not from the world. We may be the only Bibles that our neighbors read. You can ask yourself, am I bearing fruit for the Lord? Am I showing love? joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We may not preach like Paul or rouse the wicked with judgment's dread, but we can lead our children and grandchildren, our neighbors and our friends to the Savior's arms and be ready to answer him with a here I am, Send me. When, especially when we go through life's bumps, raise our hands and say, Lord, use me in this crisis. Because ready or not, he will come again. So let's learn to understand Advent again, to find the magic and hope in the good news of his promises in all of life's circumstances. Until one day, when we are called home to be with our God and our Redeemer. May your Advent season be one of refocus and filled with hope of your future with him. Amen. <clears throat>
So let us confess our faith to the triune God through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father In the season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. God of presence and peace, strengthen your church around the globe to proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and in all creation. Hear us, O oh God. God of mighty redwoods and microscopic plants, fields and city parks, the wind and the waves, be a healing balm to our wounded planet. May we nurture what you have lovingly created. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of equity and compassion, bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our communities, both great and small. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await birth, death, divorces, new unions, new jobs, retirements, healing, and life transitions of every kind. We especially pray this morning for Christine Jacobson for healing from pain and cancer. Hear us, O oh God. God of promises kept and new dreams awakened, shelter your people from destructive storms. We pray for those whose lives have been upended by natural disasters, for the work of Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, and other relief organizations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of companionship and community, we give you thanks for the saints who have journeyed with us and now abide in you. Even in distress and uncertainty, make us confident that your promises endure forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share that peace with one another, another respecting each other's boundaries. As we serve him is through our offerings. We receive your offering this morning.
together as one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Receive this blessing. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Amen.
in peace. The Lord is near. Thanks be to God.